In this video, we're going to talk about certain Greek alphabet symbols that you might see in a typical math course or in chemistry or physics. So the first one is the symbol alpha. In physics, this symbol typically represents angular acceleration. Sometimes you'll see alpha used as an angle, particularly in trig. The next symbol is a beta which can also be an angle in trigonometry. Next, we have the Greek symbol, gamma. After that, you have the symbol delta, which can be represented in any of these two forms. The first one is the lowercase Greek alphabet of delta. The second one, the triangle, is the uppercase. The triangle, you'll see this in calculus, this means change. So for example, delta x, that's the change in x, or delta y, the change in y. The next Greek symbol that you'll typically encounter is epsilon. In physics, this would represent the dielectric constant within a capacitor. Next, we have a zeta. In physics, this would be impedance, particularly in an RLC circuit. The next Greek symbol is theta. Now I'm sure you've encountered this symbol if you, you've taken a trigonometry or precalculus. So this would represent the angle in trig. The next symbol is kappa. And this one, you've seen it in chemistry or physics. This is a lambda. In chemistry, this would be the wavelength of a wave. And the same is true in physics. Next, we have this symbol, mu. And you've seen this in terms of units. Think of micrometers or micrograms. Next, we have the Greek symbol, nu, which looks like a V. This represents frequency when dealing with waves. The next one is pi, which is typically encountered in math and geometry. This is the value 3.14159, with some other numbers added to that as well. In physics, we have the Greek symbol rho, which in electricity topics, this would be resistivity. But in more classical physics, like let's say fluid mechanics, you might see this as density. Now, since I'm running out of space, I'm going to clear away a few things. Now, the next symbol is sigma, which you'll see it in two forms. That's the lowercase of sigma, and this is the uppercase version of sigma. So the lowercase sigma, this will typically correspond to an angle just as theta would represent an angle in trigonometry. The uppercase version of sigma, this is, you'll see this in math. This represents summation or sum. So for instance, let's say if we have the sigma of x squared starting from one to five, this would be one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus four squared plus five squared. So the capitalized version of sigma represents sum. Next, we have the Greek symbol tau. And you'll see this in uh, physics when you're dealing with uh, the time constant of RC circuits. Tau is equal to RC. The next Greek symbol that we have is phi, which is another type of angle. Next, we have omega. This symbol typically corresponds to angular frequency. Omega is equal to 2 pi f, 2 pi times the regular frequency. Another unit of or symbol of omega is this one. This is the uppercase version of omega. And you'll see this symbol 
when dealing with electrical circuits. So this symbol is the unit of resistance, which is measured in ohms. So those are some common Greek alphabet symbols that you encounter when taking uh, chemistry, physics, or certain courses in math. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it to be educational. If you like it, uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. Thanks again for watching.